Hi, I'm going to talk through short exercise 5-14. It's on your homework, so let's get started. 5-14, we're given a lot of questions and we need to answer each question. So the first question is true or false. Credit sales increase receivables, collections, and write-offs decrease receivables. And the answer there, if we think about it, credit sales, when we make a sale on credit, that does increase our receivable. When people pay us um, back, or we decide to write off an account, that will decrease receivables. So the answer for that one is true. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. The next one, um, true or false, a proper way to express credit terms is FOB shipping point. So is that true or false? That is false. Um, an example of credit terms would be 210 net 30. Um, FOB shipping point refers to how we're shipping it, not the credit terms. Question three, which receivables figure the total amount the customers owe the company or the net amount the company expects to collect is more interesting to investors as they consider buying the company's stock. Give your reason. Well, when we think about it, I think probably the more interesting figure is going to be that net amount. The reason the net amount is more interesting is because the company will probably collect that amount in cash. Um, otherwise, the total amount doesn't give an investor a sense of how much cash the company will be getting. The net is the gross amount less the allowance of what the company doesn't expect to collect. Next on number four, show how to determine net sales revenue. Well, net sales revenue is going to be our sales revenue less sales returns and allowances less sales discounts gives us net sales revenue. So th that is net sales revenue. Next one, show how to determine net accounts receivable. Net accounts receivable is going to be our accounts receivable less our allowance for uncollectibles gives us our net accounts receivable. Or that could be the net realizable value of accounts receivable as well. The next question is a true-false question, number six. The direct write-off method of accounting for uncollectibles understates assets. That would be false. The direct write-off method overstates assets, actually, because it fails to show the amount of receivables the company actually expects to collect. It shows every receivable, whether the company will actually collect it or not. So um, that is false. Number seven, Carolina Bank lent 150000 to Sumpner Company on a six-month 6% 6 note. Which party has interest receivable? Which party has interest payable? Which one has interest expense, interest revenue? How much interest will these organizations record one month after Sumpner Company signs the note? Okay, well, let's go through that. The Carolina Bank has interest receivable and interest revenue because it's the one lending the money. Sumter Company has interest payable and interest expense. They're mirror images of each other because Sumter Company is borrowing the money. The interest for one month is going to be the 150000 principal times 6%, the rate on the note, times one month out of 12 or 750000 Question eight, when Carolina Bank accrues interest on the Sumpner Company note, show the directional effects on the bank's assets, liabilities, and equity, whether it increased, decreased, or no effect. Well, the Carolina Bank accrual of interest is going to make assets go up because we'll have interest receivable, and it's going to make equity go up because we have interest revenue going up. The Sumpner Company, the borrower, they are going to accrue 
interest payable, which is a liability, so that's going to cause liabilities to increase. And they are also going to have interest expense, which causes equity to decrease. Number nine, another true false. Credit card sales increase accounts receivable. That would be false, and the reason it is false, because credit card sales are usually recorded as a cash sale, and then there's a credit card discount expense in there to reflect the charge that the company gets for accepting a credit card. The company has to um, pay a percent, like 2% fee. That's recognized as credit card expense, but credit card sales are cash. They are not accounts receivable. Unless, of course, the company has its own credit card and they own the credit card company, then that's a different case. But for 99% of these, when we take a credit card as a company, that's going to be a cash sale, not affecting accounts receivable. And finally, the last one, true or false, companies with strong liquidity usually factor receivables. That will be false. Um, factoring receivables, which is selling receivables to someone, can be expensive. So companies that have strong liquidity will usually form, choose a less expensive form of financing. So that does it for short exercise 5-14.